It's Friday, March 21st. I'm Amira David in Washington, D.C., and you're watching RT America. A federal judge has ordered the FBI to give a better explanation as to why it's refusing to release specific information to a graduate student looking into an alleged assassination plot. MIT graduate student Ryan Shapiro has been researching an alleged sniper plot to kill leaders of the Houston-based Occupy movement. Shapiro submitted a Freedom of Information Act request to the FBI regarding previously redacted documents. The FBI claimed it was exempt from releasing the information, and that's when Shapiro decided to take the issue to court, suing the FBI for violating the Freedom of Information Act. In a ruling last week, Judge Rosemary Coyler of the U.S. District Court for D.C. ordered the FBI to explain with more detail why it claims that information is exempt. So to talk about that and much more, I was joined earlier by the attorney representing this case, Jeffrey Light. I first asked him to tell me about what his client knew before the FOIA request and what he was seeking to find out. Uh, when Ryan Shapiro did the request, he had already gotten some documents through uh, related litigation uh, on another FOIA request that revealed Occupy Houston was being targeted by somebody or some organization uh, to be to have their leaders assassinated, um, and the uh, FBI had written a memorandum about this. It was heavily redacted. And what Ryan was seeking to do was to find out what was behind those redactions, whether the FBI was investigating the uh, sniper allegations, um, the plot that they had uncovered, or whether they were instead just uh, uh, monitoring Occupy Houston itself. And are there any theories at this point uh, as to you know what this information could be revealing? I mean, what, what is being hidden here? Well, the only thing we can know for certain from the FBI's response is that in redacting different parts of it, they had to give uh, an explanation as to which part of the law they were relying on to withhold it. So we know that certain parts of the information are considered classified. Uh, others would identify named individuals who might be responsible. And still other parts, uh, the FBI said, would reveal secret law enforcement techniques that are not known to the public. Um, the uh, court rejected the, uh, that latter part that uh, the FBI had not, in fact, demonstrated uh, that there was any law enforcement purpose behind this at all. Well, and I do want to ask you about that. And I want to give the, the response the FBI had, which is that they have the right to shield information compiled for law enforcement purposes if disclosure would interfere with an investigation, endanger life, or cause other types of harm. So you were just talking about this. I mean, how were they claiming that exactly? They were claiming that they have broad in, uh, in power to investigate anybody or anything because the FBI is a law enforcement organization. So therefore, by definition, anything that they do is a law enforcement investigation, which is pretty circular logic. And the court held that, uh, in, that that's not good enough. Further, the FBI can't just use words like terrorism or threat to national security uh, without providing some specifics to back that up. Uh, the court wouldn't just accept those terms um, and, and give the FBI a, a blank check to withhold a, anything just for that, for invoking those words. And we now know that that justification was just not enough of a response. And so she's now said that uh, she'll need extra explanation and she's ordering that um, be delivered to her by, I think, April 9th. Uh, but if, again, they sort of provide this circular logic and it's insufficient in her opinion, what's the next course of action? Well, the FBI also has the option to submit the documents themselves directly to the judge and allow the judge to determine whether they should be released, looking at them, or the unredacted versions herself. Right now, all that the judge has to go on is what the FBI is telling her uh, the documents say, and that clearly has not been sufficient. It may be that the FBI can put on the public record a lot more information about what the investigation was about. Um, if they feel they can't, they will submit that to the judge. Either way, we should get a resolution to the case as to whether additional documents will be released, and it would also shed potentially a lot of light on the situation just to find out what the FBI's explanation is for why they can't explain anything further on the public record. She did say that that information uh, would be sealed. 
What exactly does that mean? If the FBI delivers to her the documents in unredacted form, that means that I won't be able to see them or make any arguments. Um, it's just going to be between the FBI and the judge to determine um, whether the documents should be released. So does that impede the case in any way? It, it, it's not an unusual thing to happen in, in freedom of information cases because obviously if they gave me the information, they're <laughs> that would end the lawsuit. But um, so it's it's not unusual, but it is um, a, it makes it extremely difficult to achieve transparency when um, the the adversary process is so frustrated. Well. I mean, speaking of that, you know, we just learned recently that the Obama administration uh, uh, has sort of hit a new historic low when it comes to government transparency. Uh, you know, they've been censoring and denying a, a number of FOIA requests that have been issued over the course of uh, the Obama administration. Can you just speak a little bit more broadly to the difficulty uh, citizens and journalists are, are experiencing when it comes to uh, issuing these FOIA requests? Sure. Um, a lot of federal agencies, in particular the agencies doing uh, intelligence and law enforcement work, uh, seem to think that they can be uh, immune from FOIA, even though that's not what Congress intended when they passed the law. They've been coming up with a, a variety of different legal tricks uh, to try and get out of their obligations. So things that citizens might encounter include very lengthy delays, um, extraordinary uh, fees that they might be charged to get the documents um, or agencies not even doing very much of a search to locate if the documents even exist. And a lot of people don't know this but your client Ryan Shapiro is actually uh, he's known in the press as the most prolific FOIA requester to the FBI. That's quite a title and I was wondering if you could shed some light on how he claimed that title. Well, he didn't claim it. The FBI bestowed it upon him <laughs> in uh, one of his other lawsuits uh, involving uh, the FBI's surveillance of animal rights activists. Um, Mr. Shapiro had uh, sued uh, to get the FBI to continue processing and releasing the information. Uh, and they said that they couldn't do anything f for the next seven years, and they couldn't even explain on the public record why they couldn't do anything other than his dissertation project, which is to investigate the um, FBI's use of national security rhetoric to marginalize animal rights group, that that dissertation itself is such a threat, they had to submit a, a secret declaration to the court explaining why it was a threat. Um, and the public um, argument, the, the arguments made on the public record, they pointed out that he was such a prolific FOIA requester. He has 700 FOIA requests, um, and currently 200 of them are at issue in litigation. Um, he wouldn't have had to do all of this litigation if the FBI had done its job and processed the requests in a timely manner. Well, I'm sure the FBI knows his name very well. Yes. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you for weighing in, Attorney Jeffrey Light. Thank you.